Let's continue with our exploration of Swift macros. Last time, we created a member macro that added both a stored property and a computed property. So let's begin with this class example and import create async stream and use our macro. In this case, we say create async stream of an int and name it numbers. If we expand the macro, we'll see this generated code, which is the two properties. The second property is the numbers stream. And the first is the computed property numbers, which we'll expose. We also saw that if we added a method something that used this numbers continuation, it worked just fine. So that's a member macro. The macro creates one or more members for our class example. So a member macro can add one or more members to a class, a struct, whatever. But what if it needs to do more? For inspiration, let's look at, at observable. The most obvious part of the observable macro is that it is an attached member macro that adds members with names underscore dollar observation registrar, two methods, access and with mutation, and an arbitrary depending on what the name of the properties are that are in the observable class. But there's more to observable. It's also a member attribute macro. And finally, it's also an extension macro that adds conformance to the observable protocol. So the observable macro is at once a member macro, a member attribute macro, and an extension macro. And that brings us back to our question. What if a single macro needs to do more? Our current case is a silly example, but it will illustrate what we're trying to show. So currently create async stream expands to create these members. But what if we'd also like to add an extension? And in this extension, we'd like example to conform to identifiable. And that means that we have to add ID. Note, to use create async stream, you'll have to import foundation on your own outside of the macro. As I said, this is a silly example, but let's start with create async stream and make sure that it's both a member macro and then also an extension macro. So let's go back to our code. You'll find the definition in create async stream .swift, And here's our existing definition of create async stream. You can see its signature there. It is a member macro and the names are arbitrary because they depend on the name that we pass in. Now suppose we'd like to also make it an extension macro. And in this extension, we want to conform to the identifiable protocol. This will mean that we have to add a member named ID. We've already implemented the member macro bit. You might remember that in create async stream macro, we conform to member macro, and that required that we had this signature of expansion. Here's where we returned our array of declaration syntax. The first element is our computed property, and the second element is our stored property. So that's how we conform to member macro. We could conform as well to extension macro, but you know that I'd rather do that elsewhere. I'd rather create another extension where I conform to the extension macro. And here I'm returning an array of extension declaration syntax. In this case, it will contain only one element. I have to try to create an extension decl syntax, and it takes a string as a string builder to help us make this much simpler. One of the nice things about this signature of the expansion method is it tells us what we're providing an extension of. And so we can use that in our string to say we're creating an extension. So example will go in here. It's type trimmed that conforms to identifiable. And then inside the fact that we said we're adding a member named ID allows us to add this computed property. As I said, it's a silly example, but we've shown that a single macro can be defined and implemented for more than one type of an attached macro.